Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, uh, in crystallographic texture, the last uh, lecture in this particular uh, module will be on application. Okay. So, what is the application of, uh, of understanding of texture on one of the properties that is what we are taking okay. and that is what uh, we have discussed earlier also that uh, when you are deforming or you are doing a deep drawing of any sheet material. Okay. So, there is a flow anisotropy that means if I take a for example, let us take a, a material or a rolled sheet for example. Okay. So, this is my rolling direction, transverse direction and normal direction. So, basically I am taking a uh, suppose I am measuring the tensile properties, okay, flow properties in this direction. So, I am taking a sample from here and then I, so this is I, I would call as 0 degree okay and then maybe I will take another sample like this okay at 45 degree okay or maybe another sample like this parallel to T d okay that I will call as 90 degree okay and if I measure the flow properties in each of these condition if, if the flow properties are same okay the ductility the yield distress and so on. Okay, then I have no problem the material is isotropic okay, and there would not be any problem in the formability of the material. Okay. But usually uh, the issue is that suppose if I take a, a, a round blank like this and I am deforming it. Okay. So, in the cross sectional suppose it, it is deforming like this. Okay. Then, okay, so there will be uh, thinning in this region okay, because you are stretching the material. Okay. This part will not deform at all. Okay. So, uh, if, 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 the, if the material has different properties in different direction, it is, it is a circular uh, blank which we are deforming, what will happen that in this direction suppose deformation is easy, but suppose in this direction deformation is may not be easy for example, or in this direction the deformation is not easy. So, what will happen? The deformation will take place in this direction, but in this direction the material will just get uh, in, instead of stretching it will be pulled by the by the punch. Okay. If, if the deformation is not uh, uh, uniform throughout the sheet. Okay. So, this kind of anisotropy develops what we call as uh, earring phenomena as already I have told you. So, in this direction the material is not able to deform okay but in this direction material is able to deform okay that is why you are seeing that the material got pulled by by the punch whereas in this case it the deformation took place material did not uh, pulled by the punch okay but the other problem will always be there that there will be thinning here okay it will get thin uh, in this location okay so, one is the planar and uh, so this anisotropy now I can divide into two different type of anisotropy. Okay. The one first is called planar anisotropy and uh, this planar anisotropy is the cause for this kind of earring phenomena. Okay. And uh, basically it is simply that uh, the, the property in, in different direction is different. Okay. Uh, so, that can be found out by a relationship like this okay, delta r, where r is the, uh, if you are doing a tensile test, uh, if I divide with width strain by a thickness strain, okay, then uh, the, the, uh, that will give you r, the ratio will give you r. Okay. And this width and strain ratio, if I determine for a sample taken from uh, parallel to rolling direction, then it will be r naught. Okay. 
if it is parallel to TD that means at 90 degree to rolling direction then it will be R90 and if it is at 45 degree then it will be R45 and in this three direction we are trying to see that what is the what is the this ratio with the strain uh, to thickness strain ok. So, if you have a large value of delta R ok whether it is a, a positive or negative that means absolute value of delta R because it can be negative also if R45 is more than uh, sum of R0 uh, or R90 or it can be positive. So, if we take the absolute value of delta R ok without worrying whether it is positive or negative the, then it indicates high planar anisotropy which is the cause of earring phenomena ok. So, that means you will have if, if delta R is more ok that means anisotropy in different direction is there ok then you will have earring phenomena ok. So, our purpose is to minimize or to, to bring down the delta R value ok. The another uh, value of importance is called normal anisotropy ok and that is the, uh, basically the that what is the thinning characteristic of the material ok. So, if you have uh, uh, large uh, uh, value of R ok that it, it is good ok that means the, the, the ratio of width to, width to thickness strain. Uh, that means, th there is a little uh, tendency for thinning ok when you have a high R value because if you see it is th this particular relationship is slightly different in the previous one we had a minus sign here, but here we have a plus sign ok. So, it is just as uh, kind of an average uh, R value ok. So, average R value if it is high then it is good because then you will have less thinning tendency ok because our R is width strain divided by thickness strain ok. So, a high R value will be there when your thickness strain is small that means, th thinning behavior is less ok and uh, then you will have a, a high R value. So, if it is deviating from unity ok then it is an indication of normal anisotropy this means uh, there will be anisotropy behavior along the thickness ok. So, one is in different direction in the plane of the sheet ok and one is that you have uh, different st strain value in the width direction and the thickness direction ok. So, these two values determine the uh, formability of the material ok. So, uh, for a good formability ok I need a high normal anisotropy value ok and low absolute value of plane and an, uh, anisotropy are good for metal forming ok. And when you will have uh, when you will have a higher planar anisotropy then uh, that which is not good actually when you if R0, R45, R90 are not equal then it means planar anisotropy exists in material whereas R value deviating from unity is an indication of normal anisotropy as I told you ok. So, I need a high uh, normal anisotropy high value of normal anisotropy and lower value of planar anisotropy. Now, what is the uh, texture which is required for this kind of behavior ok. So, deep drawing steel low carbon uh, desired property is good deformability with high R value ok and uh, uh, isotropic deformation with low delta R value as I just told you only they have taken a small r instead of capital R ok. So, you can take it as capital R this is delta R. For this you need a 111 fiber texture with which is parallel to normal direction ok. So, as we have already seen the fiber texture. So, you need a 111 fiber texture ok. In ferritic stainless steel uh, Fe 16 percent chromium ok good deformability as in 1 ok. And again 111 parallel normal direction to, uh, topologically random distribution of grains ok. So, again you need a 111 uh, fiber uh, direction which was the gamma fiber if you remember we discussed in the previous lecture. If you have a electrical steel now electrical steel the, the, the purpose is different there the purpose is not the formability, but the purpose is to reduce the hysteresis losses ok. 
as you can understand that uh, uh, these electrical steels are used in transformers where you have this primary and secondary windings okay so primary windings have uh, 50 hertz uh, electrical supply that means 50 times it is getting magnetized and demagnetized as, as the current is flowing okay so if you have a very high hysteresis losses okay it means every second 50 times you are having that hysteresis loop okay if you remember uh, you have a hysteresis loop like this okay and in each loop whatever is this area that decides the energy loss okay so if energy loss is very high then of course transformer gets heated up and also you your efficiency will be low okay so for reducing this hysteresis losses a particular texture component is required which is called Ga gauss texture already we have seen this okay so if you have a gauss texture in the in the plane of this uh, small strips of the transformer okay then uh, the this particular direction okay is the easy magnetization direction okay uh, and demagnetization also of course so your hysteresis losses will be low okay so for that the texture requirement is 100 parallel rolling to rolling direction example gauss texture okay which has a 100 parallel to rolling direction okay however it, whatever texture is required for electrical steel is usually not good for the uh, formability and whatever is required for formability is not good for uh, electrical uh, steels ok. So, as uh, we have to told that uh, you need a gamma fiber is most suitable texture for uh, formability ok and that uh, lies here which comes uh, in 45 to 45 degree section ok and location is somewhere here which is basically 111 plane ok uh, parallel to ND. Okay, so, you can have different directions. So, for example, it is starting from 111110 and the last one is 111112. So, basically, the 111 is parallel to ND, that is the component we need for, uh, for uh, good formability in steels. Okay, and uh, if you have this, you will have lower uh, planar anisotropy, okay, and that will be good for your. Uh, earring behavior. If you see anisotropy in uh, aluminum alloys, uh, okay, effect of texture. So, minimization of earring can be achieved by mixing the cube and S texture. Okay. These two components if you mix, okay, then uh, the earring phenomena is kind of a distributed throughout the throughout the you can say circumference. Okay. And the optimum volume ratio of these two is uh, uh, S and cube is 1.67 is to 1 if you have this kind of uh, mixing of the two texture components okay, then you will be having a, uh, a, a good formability. Okay. So, again you can see that where the uh, this particular cube is of course, uh, will be at this locations. Okay. Uh, at the corner locations and uh, S is uh, uh, you have at these locations. Okay. So, if you have a good combination of this S and Q, okay, you will be able to achieve a uh, lower uh, planar anisotropy okay, and that will help you in the earring phenomena. This is another uh, work of ours uh, where, where we uh, studied the anisotropy in friction stirred processed uh, aluminum alloy. Okay. So, in the first figure you we have different texture components copper, S, brass, gauss and cube okay. and uh, on the y axis their fraction is noted down. Okay. So, basically these are the different FSP condition friction stir processing condition. Uh, there is one module on severe plastic deformation later on. Okay, with there we have discussed the friction stir processing in more details. Okay, so you will be able to understand uh, that what we are trying to say here. Basically, this 3050, all these are uh, traverse speed. Okay, and MP here is used for multiple pass. Okay, so we have done multiple passes here. Okay, so that you are able to get a, a, a enough amount of sheet for doing forming experiment or doing anisotropy experiments okay 
So, texture components are there copper is brass gauss and cube all are there okay, and their fractions are noted on the y axis. And um, you can see that uh, uh, this is the planar inner anisotropy plotted for different condition. Okay. So, the multipass you can see that the planar anisotropy values are much lower than all the other conditions okay, which is a good uh, thing for, uh, for sheet metal forming. Okay. And uh, also the, the uh, normal anisotropy value also is lower, okay, but uh, reasonably high, okay, so that you, you will be able to get the, the benefit of both lower planar anisotropy and high normal anisotropy. Okay. So, and uh, basically you can see that, what, uh, so there are two type of calculations done here. Okay. So, one is uh, what we have uh, done uh, or what we have calculated from the actual experiment. Okay. So, you have experimental value, uh, value and calculated anisotropy experimental and calculated. So, these are shown, these particular ones are the experimental ones okay. and these are the estimated from the uh, texture analysis. Okay. So, you have different texture component, they will affect the anisotropy property. So, you can see that there is a nice matching between the uh, calculated anisotropy and the experimental anisotropy, both are increasing and decreasing uh, almost in a similar fashion. Okay. And uh, in, in multipass both are showing a very low value. Okay. That means, the combination of uh, texture component uh, which is we have achieved in um, 30 and 50 mega Pascal. So, you have low cube, cube is coming down. Okay. And um, uh, similarly, if you see uh, brass, uh, copper is going up in case of uh, this 30 mega Pascal, where you have the minimum planar anisotropy. Okay. Uh, for S also more or less same, but for 50 mega Pascal it is uh, 50 uh, uh, multiplus at 50 it is coming down. Okay. So, the effect of that you can see on the planar and uh, this uh, uh, normal anisotropy. So, the, since it is achieved in the multiple pass uh, friction stress processing, so that is a very good condition for um, forming. Okay. So, with that uh, this is a again a short lecture on the kind of a case study or application of texture in, uh, in mechanical properties. Okay, so, now we have seen that what do we mean by texture okay, and we also have seen that different uh, processing condition uh, give rise to different type of textures, okay, texture components and this texture component ultimately affects uh, mechanical properties. Okay. So, this gives you a complete picture that uh, how uh, the, the processing conditions affect the microstructure and texture okay, and then how that in turns affect the mechanical properties uh, that is the ultimate use of the material. For example, either it can be in case of forming process or it can be in terms of electrical steels. Okay. So, you, you, this should be a good example of control of different microstructural properties by processing and then seeing the effect of that on the properties. Okay. So, thank you for your attention.